Trinidad is a beautiful island in the Caribbean. It has a history of black slavery, which was abolished in 1833. This was also followed by the importation and indenture of Indians in 1844. In 1915, a young girl was born, growing up in a culturally rich environment to a loving family who was struggling to make ends meet. In 1924, the family decided to improve their opportunities and move to New York, USA. Okay then, guys, are you ready to hear the story of Claudia Jones? Do you even know who Claudia Jones is? Well, I was doing some research. I was trying to find out London's great women of colour, and I was doing research on this and the survey. And in doing this survey, the name Claudia Jones just kept coming up again and again and again. And so my journey into discovering Claudia Jones started. I'd heard of the name Claudia Jones before. I thought she had something to do with the Notting Hill Carnival or the precursor to the Notting Hill Carnival. Um, that indoor carnival that took place in King's Cross at um, St Pancras Town Hall. I thought she had to do with that, but the precursor to the Notting Hill Carnival. Have you all heard of the Notting Hill Carnival? Surely you've heard of the Notting Hill Carnival the largest street party in Europe. Hey guys, I know we're in your living room, but let's transpose to being in carnival. I'm gonna ask you to get up off your sofas and join the carnival. So let's all dance. <laughs> Claudia Jones. So the first thing I discover is that Claudia is buried to the left of Karl Marx at Highgate Cemetery. The left of Karl Marx. So there must be more to Claudia than Carnival. I think she must be a very special lady. So guys, are you ready to meet Claudia and hear her story? Well, gosh, I remember when entering New York, the loud bellow of the ship's horn, everyone clambering on deck to see our arrival in this great city of dreams and hope. Come on, everybody, and get your baggage. The ship's about to arrive. The Statue of Liberty standing resplendently tall with a crown of gold. <laughs> I never dreamed that I would later be incarcerated on Ellis Island. And with that, in full view, a lie, a statue of no liberty, a statue of oppression and injustice. <laughs> Anyways, going back to my arrival in New York, I was so in awe. So excited, I squeezed Daddy's hands and I looked up at Mommy. Our dreams were about to start, or so Daddy said. But I was worried. I mean, what was I going to see? Who was I going to meet? What was it going to be like? But Daddy said that the walkways are paved in gold and that our troubles would be over and that we would be rich, happy, and healthy. And 
her family moved to Harlem, New York. They were excited and full of hope. But alas, their dreams weren't as anticipated. They were in search of work, as so many Caribbean families were. They were unwelcome immigrants in a hostile environment. They were poor. It was hard. Life was tough. But Claudia was in her loving family and she was bright and she just loved school. New York wasn't the land of hope and glory that daddy promised, but I love school. I just love learning. But oh, how I missed my home. This bit of cold, the first time I saw snow, I thought it was so pretty, but I soon learned that not all that glitters is. Anyways, things were not as we expected. I was missing the warmth of the golden sunshine bathing my skin and the palm trees swaying through the bright blue skies. Mm and the ripe, sweet fruit that I could pluck from the low-hanging arms of the tree. I got home from school one day, and Daddy told me that Mother was sick. The last time Mother was sick, we were all tested, and I tested positive for tuberculosis. I rushed into her room. It was dark, and the curtains were closed. Mama was propped up on all these pillows, her head sweaty and trying to smile. Her eyes glazed over and her mouth cracked and her dry lips quivering in an attempt to turn upward. This time Mama really looked sick and I was frightened. My mother passed away that night, and I can still hear daddy's crying. I thought my heart was going to burst. I was just a teenager. mother had survived five years in this brutal, cruel, hostile environment of New York City. And it was the death of my mother which led me to develop an understanding of the suffering of my people and my class and to look for a way to end it. continued. Claudia left school early. She was an active communist. She worked with the likes of Paul Robson and CLR James. She was arrested many times and incarcerated during the period of the MacArthur era. She was deported. They wouldn't have her in Trinidad. They considered her to be too much trouble. So she was sent to the UK and arrived in London in 1955 as an undesirable alien. However, in the UK, Claudia continued her activism, setting up the very first Caribbean carnival, as we discussed before, in King's Cross. Also founding the first West Indian newspaper for her, com for her community, the West Indian Gazette. Claudia also worked alongside the Windrush and World War II veteran Sam King and 
they opposed the 1962 Commonwealth Immigration Act, the root of today's hostile environment and Windrush scandal. Claudia lived for another nine years in Britain and she died at the age of 49. She died on Christmas Eve. And I'm going to read to you now the reading on her headstone. On her headstone to the left of Karl Marx, it says, Claudia Vera Jones, born Trinidad, 1915. Died London, 24-12-1964. Valiant fighter against racism and imperialism, who dedicated her life to the progress of socialism and the liberation of her own black people. I salute Cordia Jones, mother of the Caribbean Carnival, founder of Britain's West Indian Gazette, great orator and campaigner for human rights, one of London's great women of colour. She earned her space to the left of Karl Marx. Truly a very special lady. And today, the Notting Hill Carnival takes place in the shadow of Grenfell Tower. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for uh, joining us this evening for this uh, short play that is the first time we've actually performed it. Um, and it's just the first act of the play. So we really are looking forward to your feedback that you give us to help us uh, progress it further. Uh, anybody who wants to be involved with us, please do put your details in the chat. But I, I want to thank the people that have worked along with me because I wrote this just at Christmas and I met Danai and she'd never acted before and she has done an amazing job in taking this on and performing it this evening. And I also want to thank Moji, our director, because she didn't know who I was and she's taken us, taken us under her wing in order for us to put this performance on tonight. And when I wrote this, uh, this, this, this little play, was intended for the theatre, for stage. And um, we've had to adapt it. We're running it online, doing our rehearsals in Zoom. So it's been an absolute adventure. And I'm so pleased that so many of you managed to join us this evening. Um, I don't know whether Moji wants to say a few words. No. I'd also like to thank Patrick as well, who was our fantastic narrator. And um, he was only asked last week to, to take that role on, so I really commend him for stepping up for the mark. So thank you very much indeed. Okay. Well, yeah, and uh, just to say thank you to everyone who's attended, um, and thank you to Danai, thank you, Joyce, uh, and thank you to Patrick. I think you've all done a wonderful job. I'm really proud of you. Thank you all, everyone, for coming. Thank you. And of course, we have to thank Charlie who's the person that's made the Vimeo live run. So thank you, Charlie, for all your patience and making all those sounds work as well. So I think that's the end of our session. Does anybody have any questions they want to put in the chat? 